it's me, Renee. I'm back. And today, as you see from the title, it's going to get personal. P -p 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 personal. So, now I've been on booktube for actually a year and a half. And lately I've feeling this feeling that I kind of want to tell you something. So, yeah. So, let's just get into it, shall we? Softly. So, it's, it's all, this has a reason for it. So, as you know, I've been uh, introducing every video of mine, more or less, with I'm Renee, it's Renee, I'm back, or I'm Renee, and I'm back. So, uh, the honest to God truth, I'm not Renee, it's a hat I put on. So today, I'm putting the hat off and giving you a choice. Because, yeah, in all honesty, Renee is a nickname. And for most part, I've liked it, but I kind of want to tell you the story behind it and to tell you my real name. So, okay. To be able to explain this better, I kind of have to go back to the beginning, oh, to talk a bit about how my life and stuff. So, as I mentioned something before, but it's been a while now, I've actually lived in different places. I've lived both in Chile, in South America, Santiago de Chile, as well as Sydney in Australia. I lived in Sydney in Australia when I was eight, in 2000-2001. And Chile was in 2009, so it's closer to now, and yeah. And uh, so, yeah, so I lived abroad, but mostly lived in Norway. And the thing is, my given name does not really work in English or in Swedish or in Spanish. In English, it just sounds so awful. Well, for most part, people can't really pronounce it at all. And if they can pronounce it slightly, they add an H to it, which is just, well, it's wrong and it's just, it hurts my ears. It really, really hurts my ears. And then in Spanish, it just does not sound good either, really. Though after a while, they could pronounce it in Spanish. You know, in English, they didn't really do that because pronunciation issues and then and also like so and yeah also because of issues uh because of life and people both times when i lived in australia but also when i lived in australia and also when i lived in chile i was bullied greatly bullied part of it was because of my weird name but also because of other stuff but yeah being bullied for, because of my name was not fun, not at all. So I kind of got bad associations with my name. But it's not only that, it's also like in Norwegian, well, like, because, well, technically, technically, my name is not Norwegian per se. I saw, uh, well, I've seen it years ago, I saw like a note that said originally it was German. But like, it's it's not a name that's kind of international, let's say, in a way. So it's, yeah, uh, but yeah, so like when it's pronounced Norwegian, it's kind of like, it's not bad per se, I suppose I might have heard worse names, but like in Norwegian when it's pronounced how it's supposed to pronounce, to me it just sounds so bland and boring, so either it's pronounced horribly wrong and just my ears are, uh, my ears hurt because just I can't take it, well, you know, literally hurt, but yeah, it's just, I don't really like how it's pronounced in other languages, most other languages, well, most other languages, in the other languages, all other languages I've been exposed to, and in Norwegian, it just doesn't sound good really at all. So what I end up doing, I end up uh, actually giving myself a middle name when I turned 20, because how things, uh, because of because of how it fits, like it was most practical to use, do it when I was 20 and not 18. So I gave myself actually a middle name. 
which is kind of how where Rene comes from. But Rene is not my middle name. As some of you know from having in Buddy Reed, Edwin, hey, hey, Katie. Well, and she's uh, supposedly, she's actually known, uh, named Catherine, not Katie, but she goes by Katie. And uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of like the issue to story to have like my for real first name. But that one I'm actually not going to give you because. I don't like it at all really well. I like it a small amount, but not that much. What I am going to give you is Ronald's, the middle name that I gave myself, because I suppose you might be able to pronounce it, because I went by Renee because I feel like it's easier to go by Renee than the middle name, because even though it's closer to something international sounding, it's not that. But, you know what, I um, kind of feel like as I said, lately I'm feeling slightly like having this feeling lately, and the feeling I'm feeling is kind of like a fraud, like I'm doing something with a name that's not mine. Though well, it's not incorrect. I mean, people people have weird nicknames and stuff, but yeah. I mean, how does Bill be uh, come from Will? It's just weird, but yeah. And uh, so and now I'm gonna give you. My official middle name, which is Renate. 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 So I suppose, I mean, how it's pronounced is kind of Norwegian, with the Norwegian sounds. And uh, I know that in English you don't really uh, pronounce E at the end of stuff. In Norwegian we do. I, don't also, I also know that actually I think in Latin America there's a... Uh, there's a uh, what's the word again? I think there's kind of like a fashion house called Nata, so I suppose you kind of have some letters there. And also, I think there's a character in Big Little Lies called Renata. So, I suppose since it's so close to Renata, I, I'm giving you a choice to try to pronounce Renata. So, if you in the future, if you want to, you can uh, if you tag me or talk about me in a video, you can say. Renate from the Library of Alexandria, or you can go with Renee. So it's kind of like if you if you want to try to pronounce the official name that I would say I enjoy the most, you can go with Renate. 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 Though uh, I do, I would say I kind of, I've kind of gone, gone like a circle because first of all, like, I really enjoyed Renee. Then I was like feeling like, ah, oh, I'm such a fraud. And now I'm like, no, I don't really like Renee again. So you can go also use Renee. That's up to you. So yeah, that's the first part of this personal video I'm doing. That's not uh, well. That's that's not, that's not like me trying to mock someone that without stutter. It's more like being referencing the uh, Gilmore guys where they some of the personal stories and then I has like said like. B -b 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 personal so it's kind of like a jingle it's not a mocky way hoping you don't take it away so yeah uh the other part i want to talk about is my uh, my uh condition well that sounds weird uh, uh my diagnosis i suppose it's right term really i talked about it sometimes before i kind of want to do a little video on it and yeah well it's on that also my name, but yeah. <coughs> Sorry. So, uh, since I was, well, when I was a kid also, like, I was weird, but I didn't get diagnosed until I was 16. And you might ask yourself, what's the diagnosis again? It is NDL, which stands for Non-Verbal Learning Disorder. Why it's N-D and not N, uh, uh, N-L? D? I don't know because acronyms. But that's what it means. And then you might ask yourself, well, what does nonverbal learning disorder contain? Like entail? What does it mean? Well, <clears throat> it's actually on the spectrum. I suppose you might, because nowadays a lot of stuff are out of media and stuff, but like you might have heard, heard of the spectrum. Which is something you talk about if you're an autism, you might, well, if you have autism or a person with autism, you might call, say, you're on the spectrum or you're 
yeah, you're somewhere on the spectrum. And uh, that spectrum is kind of like a line that was made from like 50 years ago, 100 years ago, well, many years ago. Uh, so like people with um, issues that like they can't really talk, they can they can understand things perfectly, but they don't, don't really talk that much. They're like this place on the spectrum, but then people who talk more, but don't understand more, are more there. And yeah, you know, it's a big line. And it's kind of like, of like how much you are able to do, how much uh, trouble you have in day to day life, and how much how much help you need as well in a way to like understand the world and live in it. Uh, so with me, uh, also like with how NDL often um, <clears throat> often often the normal symptoms of NDL is bad at maths. So yeah, yeah, it's true. It's like if you if you're awful at maths. You might have any other, well, of course, there's other stuff you can have as well. We also often have bad or a very bad balance. I have never had a good balance. Like, always when we, it was like, I would never really be good with coordination, like with my body either. So, like, when we did uh, hide, hide and seek as a kid, I would always, or like when we did tag, I would never, uh, I would always lose because I would just run awfully bad and I yeah, would never find a good place to hide and um yeah yeah um and also <clears throat> and all yeah and also some people that have MDL actually don't don't really do bicycles because they don't really manage to learn how to bicycle so they just kind of skip that whole thing I know how to bicycle though I haven't really done that in quite a few years because the last bicycle I had the brakes were off, so yeah, I'm kind of scared to go back on a bicycle. But yeah, um, and then the last, what well, last, last is symptom. I'll I'll t link things in the below. Last is symptom is uh, call this as was very in a word non-verbal stuff. So sarcasm or uh, <coughs> or irony or if you. All this non-verbal communication that's kind of going around in the world all the time. All these unspoken rules, they're not really easy for me to understand. Or people with non-verbal learning disorder. So I suppose in in that regards, it's similar to autism. And so yeah, as I suppose like often when people are uh, on in movies or books when they have autism, I feel like, oh, I recognize that and that and that stuff. So. In a lot of regards, it's similar, which is suppose it's also on the spectrum, so they will be similar. <coughs> but yeah, so like to give you other examples, uh, I, as you might have seen, I love Disney, still love Disney, uh, and also as I, as I talked about, I love movies, I love TV. I don't really like like this, the Oscar. Well, I of, don't often like the Oscar-winning movies because. I often I can often sense there's something that they say and that I don't like really catch, but I don't really understand like what what I'm not catching. So there's a lot of stuff that just go straight over my head, like, okay, now something happened in this scene and this scene and this scene I'm I'm not really understanding stuff. Or like when for some yeah, when there's movies where lots of people are just kind of communicating with looks and just body language and yeah, a sarcasm. Another thing that's not an issue for me is body language and looks. It's kind of difficult to understand sometimes. <clears throat> so yeah, when there's movies like that, I tend to avoid them because I don't really. There's so much that just goes over my head that I don't really enjoy them. Really, I just am baffled and confused by them. Uh, so I suppose because Disney, because they're mainly meant for mainly meant for kids, they're often at a very surface, surface level, and of course the stuff going on. On different this plot A plus B, you know, this stuff for adults and for kids, but like often it's not that hard to understand what's going on and stuff. It's not that complex. And uh, yeah, uh, actually, uh, I rewatched The Good Wife as I talked in the early video. I really like The Good Wife, the TV series. I rewatched it last year or some of it, and I kind of saw like, oh, I think there's something going on here and here and here. They're like, I can sense something is going on, but can't really understand what's going on. 
they're like, oh my god, I used to love this, and I'm like watching it, I'm so confused, because there's so much I don't get or understand, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's also uh, the issue, issue for, for example, like flirting. I've never really understand, like, how does flirting work? How do you flirt? Like, uh, I suppose because a lot of flirting is kind of like mm, sarcastic or like non verbal, it's kind of like just kind of this vague, diffuse thing. Like, in France, when uh, Joey flirts, he talks about how flirty looks people up and down, says, Hi, how. Hi, how are you doing? So you can't see it's like very obvious. Okay, that's flirting. I, people did that to me. I understand it's flirting. Like sometimes I mean, talk, talk to people and say like, you look nice today. And then some people say, are you flirting with me? I'm like, I'm giving you a compliment. I mean, does every compliment or every positive reaction mean flirting? That can be flirting. I mean, I suppose that's kind of why people are confused because they think like people are flirting when they just at being nice and being friends, but like, yeah, flirting confuses me very much. I suppose I'm not the only one that is confused over that, but yeah. Another thing that also confuses me is emojis. Uh, I am a millennial, like I'm 28, I'm turning 29 this year, but still emojis, it's not really something I understand very much of, like, I suppose like, I remember like, in the early days, like in 2002-2003, you often you just had like the smile face, and then you have this sad face, and then you have maybe the anger face. That's more or less it. Now you have so many different emojis, and I was just, just smiling, it's also different emojis, like, for some reason eggplant means dick, it does not mean the little eggplant, it's like, how did that happen, why did that happen? So, I suppose I'm kind of a bit scared using emojis because there's so many, um, there's so many uh, layers and so many, uh, there's so many of them mean something that I don't directly mean, like eggplant is not eggplant, well, not only eggplant. And I'm like, I'm like, how am I supposed to know what that, this, this and this emoji mean? And I suppose, yeah, this is kind of another thing. I don't think, I'm supposed to. Of course, of course, uh, this, all the stuff I'm talking about is kind of me, personal. Yes, I have NDL, but like people with NDL are different people. So like, this is my experience. Uh, but like, kind of like, uh, so I can have to say that, I feel like. Uh, but uh, I also have, yes, as I said, I'm Tonet, I'm millennial. Still, I'm not quite that good with computers. I'm like... I'm not that comfortable with Googling because I feel like it's cheating. I feel like either your teachers to tell you something or your parents or someone older than you. But like, I feel like looking stuff up online is cheating. So I still not really like comfortable doing that that much, really. As well, the, because that's weird and I shouldn't really do that. I mean, it's often very helpful to Google stuff. But I have a... I have a... I have an issue with it. I don't really love doing it. So, yeah. So, yeah, there's that as well. And uh, I was about to say, I think that's more or less it. Yeah, I suppose also like the issue, like, for example, alcohol. I talked about this in another video as well. But yeah, alcohol, um, as I said, Antoniette. But alcohol is not really something I love. Like, I, I like some drinks. Like, for example, I like port wine. That's a bit weird. I don't like red wine or uh, white wine that much, but I really like port. At least some parts, some types of port. I like a liquor, like the kind of like where you have like some lim limoncello. I really like. I like the Rory from the Gilmore Girls. Uh, the um, the drinks they got made, but like beer or wine, I don't like it. So that's kind of like most people like one or the other. And also, I'm twenty eight. I've actually never been drunk because like I think it's come kind of maybe it has something to do with me and the L so it could be something like to something else but most people I know actually ha has autism don't really like to drink or like don't drink excessively and I suppose that's I think that's kind of in there like I don't really see the point like often when you start to drink when you're 16 17 14 15 you start to drink and you drink beer, but you force it down because it's just so, so, supposed to be cool and an adult. But like, 
why would you force yourself to drink something just because it's cool? I mean, I didn't like a beer the first time I tried it, and I don't like it like now. I'm not going to force myself to enjoy it. I suppose that's kind of snacky, while also that really actually don't drink coffee, because I try it now and then, I never enjoy the taste of it, never. And I'm not going to force myself to enjoy it, because, like, society tells me I should do it. And, um, yeah, so... And so, like, this whole thing of, like, being drunk, I never really, actually never really seen the appeal. People say, like, well, you get drunk because you can relax. And, like, so the only time you can relax is when you're drunk? I think that's something wrong with you there. And also some people say, like, well, when I'm drunk, or, uh, yeah, when I'm drunk, have a few drinks, I can just, um, I can just be so happy, and I can just, I have such a great time, like, well, okay, maybe so, but, like, does that mean that when you were 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, um, all, that's, all the years you're never drunk, because, yes, some people would start drinking all the years, I don't really think that many people would drink when they're 8, 9, 6, hopefully not 6, anyway. I don't know, but hopefully not six. So, like, for example, when you were six and you were in children's party or when you were, like, in recess and playing, you weren't drinking, you weren't having a beer, you weren't having wine, but you were still having an absolute blast. You were enjoying yourself immensely. So you're saying that now, because you're older and you can drink, it's the only way can you really enjoy yourself? I don't know. I feel like that's so weird, really. So, so weird, really. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, myself, I can, if I have, like, a cup of tea, a cup of tea, a book, a good chair, that's a great night for me. Or a good movie and some friends or friends and games. I don't need wine or beer to have a good time. Like, I might, like, some wines, as I said, are good, so I might drink them, but I don't need them to have a good time. And I don't, like, feel, like, feel as need really to be drunk. I slightly am, lately I'm becoming to feel like okay maybe I'll be drunk one day to kind of just feel like how it is. But I actually I think it was maybe like maybe two years ago I actually got like one or two drinks and I, one of the drinks I got was kind of like full of alcohol. So I started to like feel like after a while well actually quickly I felt like oh I'm kind of nauseous. Maybe I'm gonna throw up because people often don't like to drink too much and throw up. I'm like oh I hope I don't throw up. Because I don't like throwing up. I still suppose it's kind of like this thing where like, people often say, like, after they drink lots and lots of um, alcohol, then they often say, like, I'm never getting drunk again. I don't like throwing up. And yet, after next week, they do the same over and again. I'm like, yeah, I don't like to throw up and feel bad. So why would I drink so ex excessively? I don't really think I'll do it. So I suppose, yeah, that's, that is kind of me, kind of like I mean, a little personal video, personal explanation of some stuff. And uh, yeah, if you have any thoughts or comments, leave them down below. And uh, yeah, bye. This is me, Renate, or Renee, saying bye.